Oh, gosh, you're right. The catch, Jim. Mm -hmm. Do we need to start again? We can go through the whole thing again if you want. No, I think, um, I, I, think it, I, I think we're okay. We've gone through the, the call to order and said budget the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance. We motioned to go into the budget hearing. Right. Motion okay. into public session was Christine and Linda. Mm -hmm. Motion into public hearing was Xavier and Christine. Correct. Okay, so back to where I was. Uh, all information related to the 2021 budget is on the website, on the main page, under daily downloads, informative links, and there's also an entire section dedicated to the budget under the main navigation panel. There is a school budget section there. Uh, just to remind everybody online that this meeting is being recorded and transcribed. Okay. Some of the slides you've seen here in the little video presentation that is also available on the website with a couple of modifications, but this is what the 2021 adopted budget looks like in the column to the right. The 135, 938, 167 is the number that most of you have seen in Proposition 1 if you are district residents. And the comparison here is to obviously 1920 and to the budget draft that was presented to the board on February, uh, February on March 23rd, which was right before the pandemic really took its toll on state finances. So that last column is where we landed. You can see the decrease in the budget total from March 23rd until the date the budget was adopted on May 18th. Revenue is down and the only reason it's not down more Despite the state aid projected reduction, we did compensate for that with increased use of, of unrestricted and restricted fund balance reserves. Uh, the tax levy is obviously down over a million as well. And that tax levy you'll see at the bottom there is over $466,000 below the state mandated tax cap. Tax levy increase, budget to budget increase, the number that is really most important to taxpayers uh, they're both important, but the tax levy increase is the number that actually connects to what, 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 what will be seen on the tax bill moving forward. So the levy is used to calculate this rate for $100 of, of assessed value of a home. And this presents some of the summative numbers, total budget, budget to budget, tax levy increase and estimated tax rate increase. We did receive an estimate from the Town of Huntington Assessor's Office just last week. It showed that the district's assessed value has uh, declined by about $59,000. It is not the final assessed valuation for the school district. We'll receive that in September. And that will obviously determine what the board would like to do in terms of establishing or setting the, setting the rate, likely in October. I'm not going to go through all of these. This will be posted online. Actually, it is attached to board docs already, but just to give the, the board a reminder and the public a sense of what our budgets in recent years have supported. Done a lot of good work in Huntington. Academic, extracurricular, infrastructure. Unfortunately, this spring, we were not able to see certain things through to fruition due to the interruption by the pandemic. <laughs> Just a reminder if, actually there's not that many of you on, not on mute. All right, budget plan considerations. This, this reminds the board and the public, actually it's a public hearing, so it gives the public a sense of some of the things that we took into account when restructuring the budget. When we take these things into account regardless, but certainly had to, to, to reconsider a lot of these things after the pandemic finances turned things upside down to a certain degree. So just to hit each one of them briefly, anytime we build a budget, it's education first and our goal is to do whatever we do in alignment with the district's mission, vision, and core belief system. 
our mission statement. We've reviewed it on multiple occasions, looking to see if it needed to be tweaked or otherwise. And really, it has withstood the test of time. And, and the reason for that is because it really does address the diversity of our community and the uh, the individual nature of, of, of what we do and, and, and approaching student education on a one-to-one -one basis as best we can. We've got to approach it individually or else we're really not doing what we're supposed to be doing. And that's how our budget is designed, but always with the taxpayer burden in mind. When the pandemic hit, it was important for us to do the best we could to maintain uh, and in some cases, actually, we're, we're going to be looking to enhance instructional and extracurricular programs um, with savings involved, and I'll mention that in a minute, but class sizes are relatively intact as compared to what was on the books on March 23rd, which was our personnel, uh, curriculum and instruction personnel presentation, secondary electives maintained, and we've been planning for many years the introduction of the computer science program at the high school, and that is still in the budget, uh, extracurricular programs still intact, basically 100%. We were able to do this because we had a number of staff members who were retiring and a number who were not returning for their own personal reasons. And we did a, a, a fairly comprehensive job shifting things around so many of those positions did not have to be replaced. So the reductions are there, uh, but it does not impact current employees in terms of their employment status. And it also allows us, as this slide points out, to maintain K through 12 instructional and extracurricular programs across the grade levels. The other thing we had no choice but to do with this restructuring of the budget starting late March was to look at where finances are likely going to fall and to anticipate post-pandemic needs. So some of the things that we're going to have to look at very carefully, and we don't have all the answers in this regard because we honestly, we, we've got a, a post-pandemic school reopening advisory committee put together. Uh, we're actually that first, uh, that, that first comprehensive meeting is on Thursday, and a lot of things are already on paper in terms of plan A, B, C, D, et cetera, but until we know exactly what departments of health at the state and local levels will permit us to do, what the governor is going to decide education is gonna look like in New York State come September, there's, there are some things that we just can't answer at this point. But if we did have to go to an alternate schedule where kids, where kids, not all kids would be in the building on, this, on the same day at the same time. That would impact not only scheduling, it would impact staffing, it would impact transportation, probably increase our need there. One of the things that we are, we are still working out, obviously, in many different ways is, is what transportation will look like in September. Not only in terms of the buses themselves, but in terms of social distancing. We have to take basically the, the required nature of physical slash social distancing into account when setting up any classroom structure or schedule. Health monitoring, what types of things are we going to have to do to make sure that students are not coming into the building ill or staff, the same thing, and are we going to have to engage in certain practice that, practices that uh, allow us to monitor the status of that health? And that is, again, going to come from, in all likelihood, the State Department of Health uh, transmitted to the County Department of Health student staff hygienic practices, cleaning and sanitization. And we've already taken numerous actions in this regard in terms of purchasing um, PPE in advance of the need. Uh, we have our own sanitizer producing apparatus here that allows us to, to make our own. Uh, and it has been used already. We have the electrostatic machines to clean the classrooms. But if we've got to build structures, for example, that um, potentially separate students using Lexan, which is like plexiglass, but doesn't, uh, doesn't give off anything flammable. Uh, these are things that are going to, to cost and are going to, to take time to construct and to, to, to plan for in its, in, in, at the core. So these are things that we're going to have to look at very carefully before determining exactly where we're gonna be and, and how we're gonna do what we do for September. The other big piece of the puzzle is still not in place and that's what state aid is going to look like. We have heard on numerous occasions that we should be expecting at, at least a 20% cut in state aid. Our combined wealth ratio does not favor us in that regard. So who knows, it may come out to be a little bit more than that. The governor stated months ago at this point that he was going to leave, he reduced the state aid from our March 23rd budget draft to the current year levels. He actually took money out and replaced it with the federal monies that were part of the first federal, uh, federal pandemic relief package. 
it's called a pandemic adjustment, he put back basically every dollar taken. Now exactly how those dollars are going to be utilized still remains open to question as, as, uh, as many of you know, but that is not the final school aid number that we're going to be working with. The governor did give the division of budget, the state budget director, the authority to reduce aid based on state revenue actuals and projections coming in at the end of those four measurement periods that you see on the, on the short list there. He still has not adjusted aid as of the end of that April 30th budget period, uh, measurement period. And I believe the reason for that is very eagerly awaiting the potential for the next federal stimulus package, which we don't know is, if it's going to come or not. We are anticipating at this point, may not happen and we may lose 20 plus percent of the aid that is sitting on the books right now. So with that in mind, our revenue estimate, we cut the aid from the 20, uh, the March 23rd budget by, by 15%. All right, so you see those cuts in that last column, the percentages. Uh, primarily foundation aid is, is our, it's our main source of non-discretionary revenue other than tax levy. And that, that aid will take a considerable hit, and you see it right there, if, if that federal stimulus package does not, uh, does not enter stage four. Our budget plan also considers building infrastructure. I wanna make it clear that Proposition two on the ballot, and most of you who have been following how we have addressed capital projects here know this already, Proposition two has nothing to do with the 2021 school budget. Not connected at all, the money's already in the reserve accounts it's sitting there waiting for capital use. It can be used for no other purpose at this point unless we are given permission to use it for COVID-19 related capital type expenses. And that still remains to be seen. But at this point, anytime you take a dollar out of a capital reserve account for capital project, it requires voter approval. Jim, is there a possibility that they're gonna let you use capital, you know, um, funds toward some of the things that are going to come down the pike because that's a lot of additional costs there at a lack of revenue. I mean, we're going to, we have cuts and yet we're going to be expected to maybe increase transportation, increase. We, we can't use it for transportation. It has to be for capital related expenditures. Right, but could it be then used for something to improve the buildings in terms of keeping them healthier? It, it could be, yes. It could okay. be, yes. Thank you. And that's actually, I believe the bill is sitting on the governor's desk at this point. Right, so it was built into the capital proposition. And again, these, these cost estimates are based on architect and SED figures. So rooftop solar at Southdown, be the first step in the solar, in the solar project in Huntington. Uh, large chunk of the roof at Huntington High School, we started this last year. The two boilers, the science rooms and laboratories and the prep rooms and the auditorium at Jack Abrams. And these are all initial estimates when we go out to bid on these projects, there is a very full bid process that needs to be followed. There is no leeway. We've got to follow exactly uh, the, the process that is set forth by the state education department. If, it, if the bids come in under, under these costs, then obviously some of the money is not needed. It stays in the capital reserve account. And like I said, that money can be used for nothing else. There was a little piece of this capital proposition addressing a project from last year, the Finley Lockers, that has to do with uh, the flooring and the asbestos replacement. Again, the lockers came, came in under budget, under bid. Uh, the bid was under budget, and we are able to just shift a small piece of the money. I believe it's $20,000 to deal with the asbestos abatement underneath the lockers on the floor. Long-term financial plans. Based on what has happened over the past couple of months, we are looking at potentially significant increases in teacher retirement system, employee retirement system, health and other insurances, transportation, 
These are costs that are not set by us. We don't get a say. We can lobby. We can advocate. We can go go to the New York State uh, retirement system and, and argue our cases as individual districts or district consortia. But those costs are not established by us. And based on the fact that there have been losses in the markets, the TRS and ERS contribution rates are very likely to go up and potentially significantly for uh, 2021. Transportation. Uh, one of the questions that I have received a few times over the past few days is the fact that the buses aren't being used in anywhere near, near full capacity in April, May, and June, what happens uh, to, to the savings there? And some of that actually is used to offset the tax levy in the form of, of um, unrestricted fund balance and additional reserve contributions or uh, filling in some of the gaps for the spending that we'll do from those reserves for 2021. You'll see that in the next slide. Uh, but we're also concerned in terms of transportation that costs will go up. They have uh, a little bit of, of I'm going to say, control there, and we don't know what the schedules are going to look like. And if the schedules are markedly different and there's something that's, that's unique in terms of not all children in the building at the same time, that may impact transportation as well. We've got to get the kids to school. In terms of reserves, and this goes back to... Um, the state aid piece really should have put this piece before the last, but to compensate for the loss, the projected loss in state aid and to keep that revenue somewhat intact and, and to support the budget and to keep the tax levy down and manageable, you'll notice as compared to the March 23rd draft, some of the increases that we are planning. Uh, and again, do we need to do this? No, but we believe it's important so that we can we can keep that tax levy at a, at a manageable level, at a level that is uh, going to be palatable, and it also supports the maintenance of, of program and support for, for the kids that we believe is necessary. So you'll see the appropriated fund balance is up. Uh, just about every non-capital reserve fund usage is, is up from the 323, the March 23rd draft. And if we're using more reserves to support the budget, that's less tax levy, that's less tax that needs to be collected to support the budget. Significantly there, look at the retirement contribution reserve. So that's well over a million dollars increase from the March 23rd draft. And, and you see a number of different increases that offsets the state aid, the anticipated state aid loss. And again, keeps the levy, keeps the levy down. And again, more than anything else, it's that top line that impacts us most significantly. It's the anticipated state aid. And it may, it may actually end up being more significant than that if that federal stimulus relief package does not, uh, does not enter stage four. The other somewhat significant hit there is interest income and obviously rates are, are considerably lower than they were just a couple of months back. You can see that bottom line, the increase in reserve use helps us offset almost to the dollar, the state aid anticipated loss. And just a reminder, I believe everybody has their ballots at home at this point. They are already being returned. Uh, proposition number one, the 2021 school budget. Proposition number two is separate from that. And there is a reason for it. That is money that is in the capital reserve accounts building improvement funds. By law, voters must approve release of monies that are in those funds for completion of state approved capital projects. That has absolutely no impact on the tax levy, taxes collected, or the tax rate. And if that proposition is not approved, the monies cannot be used for anything else. It just goes right back into that, that set of capital reserve funds. Unlike prior years, or basically just about every year, it will be only one vote as far as I know. I don't believe that even if the governor decided, yet yeah, we'll give you a, a second chance at this, that there's enough time to, to plan for it prior to the start of the next fiscal year on July 1. So it does look like that on a, a budget not being approved, the austerity, the contingency budget would be an automatic. It includes the same tax levy adopted for 1920, the current school year without exclusions. See the other contingents right there. Uh, administrative cap requirement. If you add those two numbers together, 
the second to last and third to last lines there, the equipment must be taken out. That's just under $500,000. And another 1.45 and change million will have to be removed from the budget to meet the contingency tax levy requirement. And again, the community must pay full cost for use of facilities as part of any contingency plan. So in total, you see it at the lower right, we'd have to remove another 1.949 million from the budget to reach that contingency level. And that's where we'd have to start cutting into to, to program and likely personnel. Just a reminder of the upcoming dates, Monday, June 8th is actually a pre-scheduled June board business meeting. Tuesday, June 9th, budget vote and uh, board of education election absentee ballots only. I think everybody's aware of that at this point. No in-person voting. Ballots uh, mailed on or before May 29th. You have them already. They actually went out two days early. I believe the uh, post offices Friday and Saturday respectively, you should have received those ballots. They must be received in district by 5 p.m. on June 9th. Not postmarked. They have to be received. This is not determined by us. This is a, a, an executive order that determined this. So if they're not, the last trip to the post office we'll make is at 5 p.m. on Tuesday, June 9th. We will grab everything that's there and that, that will be where it closes. And the final meeting of the 1920 school year was added for June 22nd, regular business meeting, but also an opportunity to uh, certify the vote budget as well as uh, trustees. Typically that would be done at the June meeting, but because everything was delayed by X number of weeks, that meeting had to be added. So that's where we stand. Just a reminder that the full adopted budget line by line, X number of pages budget is located on the school district website, as is the budget brochure, as are a number of different other mailers and information and articles on the website as well that summarize every piece of, of what we've done thus far, every presentation that has been made, they're all there. I encourage those that are watching tonight, if you haven't seen them, if you are looking for additional information, it's probably there. And I am available to answer any additional questions that, uh, that any of you may have. Thank you very much. All right, remind me now at this point, do we look for questions from trustees or adjourn the, um, you know, the public hearing, the, what do we well, do? The, the trustees have already adopted. So I don't know if there's any more for the trustees to do at this point. Um, if there wasn't public commentary, I would suggest that we open the floor to questions. Okay. Um, you can you can move that up now by approval of the board or you can leave it where it is and, and... we're coming right down to it anyway okay. right so yep. I guess if, if the public has questions what I would say is jot them down or um, you know note them send them to us in that chat that way that you can do through zoom and in the meantime we're going to go ahead with our approvals and our communications and announcements and then we'll get to the the commentary section for the public when they can ask their questions does that sound good? All right, so that brings us to the Board of Education meeting minutes of May 18th. Um, I'm looking for a motion to approve the Board of Education meeting minutes of May 18th. Can I get a motion? Linda. Okay, I've got Tom and then a second. Linda. Somebody. Linda. Linda, thank you. So I had Tom and Linda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, very good, thank you. We have an FYI of budget transfers. Um, we also have, and there's a whole bunch of budget transfers right there listed. We have our treasurer's report as of April, 2020. So I am looking for a motion to approve the treasurer's report of April, 2020. Can I get a motion? Bill. Linda. Okay, so I've got Bill and Linda, thank you. Any <laughs> comments or questions? All in favor? Hi. Hi. Jim, can you opposed? unmute Michelle? Michelle can't unmute vote. Michelle. Unmute oh, Michelle. Well, Michelle is muted. She needs to be unmuted. Nah. <laughs> yes, she does. Now, don't be difficult. <laughs> All right. And that brings us down to the warrants. Thank which you. Were certified on 5-20-2020. So can I get a motion to approve the warrants, please? Christine. Oh, I've got Christine and Tom. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Very good. Okay, that's going to move us down to the board member communications and announcements. Um, 
before I open it up to everybody else, I, I was chatting with a couple of our my fellow trustees, and um, we thought that it might be a good idea to start this part of the meeting just by letting everybody know that we are one community here in Huntington. We've always been a united community and never more than in times of conflict and challenge. It's one of the things I love about this community, truthfully. I didn't grow up here, I moved here. This is a unique place in the way that we rally together and come together in difficult times. And it's salient that we started this year at a superintendent's conference day where the main topic was actually about cultural competency and, and um, those difficult conversations around race and around prejudice and the things that have bubbled up right now. And so I would just like to encourage all of our families and staff members and community members out there to, to stand together, have those difficult conversations with your kids, with your family, because there's no way to move forward without having those conversations, but do them in a productive way and in a way that does move, move this community forward, but also keeps us all together because you know, as a board member for nine years, I've cared about every single one of the kids in our school district. I don't care what they look like, where they came from, what their background was. And I, as I said, I moved here because of that. And so I just want to um, let our community know that I that we stand together, we're stronger together. And, you know, and I think we're all feeling that it's a tremendously difficult time. And I just think there's a comfort in knowing that we're a really special, unique, unique community in the way that we, we come together at difficult times. And that's what I'm gonna say. And I'm gonna open it Thank up to my fellow you. trustees. Did anybody wanna add anything? I know I just babbled, on, not babbled, I did, I, it's, hard, it's a difficult thing to talk about and I didn't want to misspeak in any way. So that was my piece but if anybody else would like to add on or or add in something completely unrelated now would be the time otherwise i'll send it over to jim he's gone all right, oh, okay. <laughs> all right jim i'm gonna send it to you then for your communications and announcements i'm just gonna piggyback a little bit on on what you just said that if i if i had and i I actually had a conversation with one of my principals earlier via an email exchange and, and, and phone. If I could hit the reset or restart button for 2020, I would do it in a heartbeat. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're dealing with enough that is incredibly sad and the events of the past couple of days, I, I mean, they're upsetting on so many levels. And, you know, as, as, as the leader of, of a district like Huntington, all of us for that matter, I, I, I think we have a charge here. It's a privilege to, to be in this position. We are in a district that is a welcome exception in terms of, of, of its diversity in a region that is, off, is way too often defined by its segregation. Um, and truth be told, I can speak for myself, I wouldn't want to do it anywhere else. Um, with, with that privilege, I, I have to say what we, what we do here needs to be the example that we set for others to emulate. Um, we have worked very hard and there's so much more to do in terms of framing, framing our actions in the context of, of equity, inclusivity, acceptance, cultural proficiency. Jen, you mentioned that before. Um, the, these need to remain our personal driving forces because there are, there are people on this planet that just aren't getting it right now. They're, they're just not. It's, it's, it's extraordinarily upsetting that we have to be in this position to have a conversation like this. And, and it, you know, we, we, have, we have to take care of this in Huntington. We can't change the world overnight, but we've got to do it one child at a time here. And um, that has to remain among our primary charges now, today, moving forward and, and indefinitely down the road into the future as far as we can take it. So, um, just know that, and, and I do believe I speak for all of us, that, that we, we take this very seriously. We, this, something has to change here. Not here, but across, across every community, across the country, across the planet for all, for all, you know, for, for all intents and purposes. So we're, we're in this together and, and we are going to do the very best we can to take the strongest lead role we can in Huntington. Huntington strong, that's what we are. Thank you very much. Um, did you have anything else you wanted to touch on before we move on to public commentary, Jim? 
you know, the, the, the other thing seems so in, 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 I know. inconsequential at I this know. point, but um, we, we have a number of things upcoming. Um, I, I do want to express my, my sincere um, regret for those advanced placement students that got caught up in, in the college board's um, failure to pay attention to their, their technology platforms prior to administering the exams. Uh, our kids are champions and they take things in stride and, and they're ready to do what they need to do, but nobody should have been put in that position. Um, and also just to thank the folks um, across our principals at every building, uh, across the grade levels for the planning that they have done to, to send these kids off in the best manner possible under the circumstances, particularly at the high school, Mr. Cusack and company, they've done some, some outstanding work to, to put some things together that we, we hope will be meaningful for these kids. And they, we know it can't replace what, what can't be done right now, but hopefully we can, we can put them in a position to remember, they, they will never forget this, I know that, but to put them in a position to remember what they experienced in, in the most positive of lights. And again, as I mentioned, we are meeting on Thursday with a comprehensive group that's going to, to continue our planning for what we are going to, to, to roll out in September. And again, questions still to be answered, uh, but we will be ready. We appreciate that you're keeping ahead of the curve, Jim. I, and I know that the community probably senses this, but the board members, the trustees get to see it up close that you have managed to stay ahead of all these decisions in a way that's put us in a really good place proactively throughout this entire chaotic situation. So thank you thank very you. much. And summer school information will be going out soon for those that may have a chance for an enrichment program and the extended year program I know is on a lot of people's minds. We must do it virtually and that is uh, not a choice that we, that we have to make. Right. It's been imposed upon us. At least there'll be something. That's, yes. uh, you know, you have to keep it going, so. Jim, can I ask you a question? Yep. Um, people have asked me how the vote is going to be counted. Uh, how are we going to do that? Can you let us know? I, I know that we're very transparent board through a district and you had told me that it might be live streamed is that something yes was um nope. thank you that was trying to actually yeah. decipher oh, that's that. a good the question, question that, that was texted there was a word there i missed uh so the I, I know there's been a lot of concerns about the fact that names are on ballots and, and anonymity but you know we have a, a a comprehensive process here and i do want to credit uh joanne miranda district clerk for the tremendous work thank that you, she joanne. has done uh, from making sure that our ballots are, are, are perfectly situated and that th there are districts that haven't even received them yet and there are problems with printers and, and I, can't, I can't even imagine. Yes. Uh, but the ballots, the ballots are not, there's two envelopes. Uh, the ballots are not to be opened until June 9th, beginning at 5.01 p.m. until that, that deadline hits. Uh, we will have a a team here socially distanced in one facility there will be a camera on that on that group throughout it will be live streamed on the district youtube channel we're setting that up as we speak so anybody that wants to to, to watch or follow that process from 5 p.m until we hope to finish on the night of the ninth if depending on how many ballots we receive it may have to carry into the 10th we are permitted to do that i need people uh, bright-eyed and 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 fresh to do this so to keep them going till two o'clock in the morning wouldn't make sense either they can continue everything locked up until the uh until the next morning um, but everything will be live streamed and uh the the ballots must be removed from the envelopes there is no opening of those ballots or unfolding of those ballots by the people who are opening those envelopes and you'll likely be able to see that on the uh, on the live stream uh, it's got a pan across the whole room but they'll be opened and separated and not counted until after that envelope is removed. So they will be anonymous. Uh, I, I know that there have been, it's not necessarily a question I have received, but I've heard it in, from multiple districts. So we are, we are going to follow, follow this to the letter here and do it the right way so that there is no reason for people to question what we are doing. And this is the way we do everything that, uh, that, that needs to be done in a manner like this. So does that answer the question X or is, is there any? Thank you. No, I think that sets forward the safeguards that you put in place for the vote Absolutely. count. Thank you. It'll probably be done, um, probably be done in the gym because we can separate people and, and mm -hmm. again, I, I, I don't touch these ballots. I stay out of that room, but uh, Joanne has a tremendous handle on this and I would be remiss if I didn't thank her again because we, we you know, we, 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 we both look carefully at everything, but uh, this is not something that you can afford to make mistakes with. 
and you're you're seeing already what's going on out there because it's uh, it's a quick turnaround and it's very easy to make mistakes when you have to move so quickly. But uh, mm -hmm. we're on it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And again, thank you, Joanne. We think you rock. All right, so we're going to take this to our public commentary section. And but Jim, I, you're in charge of this part. What I think I can do here is I'm going to open up the participant list. If you click, any of you click on participants, there is a feature there that you can click on. It says raise hand. If you raise a hand, I can find you by scrolling down the list. And this is for any public commentary, including the budget yeah. hearing? Oh, somebody's got a hand raised. You see it, Jim? I got it. Okay, it's a phone number. Go ahead, five one six. Hi, everybody. Three, six. That's me. Didn't I announce my phone number to everybody? Um, I see you, Holly calling. <laughs> Thanks for having the meeting tonight. Um, just following up, I have a couple of questions, Jim. On the ballot counting process, um, will trustees be allowed in the room? That are running for election or re-election. How did they? How did did they have um, independent observers or anything like that? Okay, so um, and I'm going to kind of do this in Q and A fashion because I think this is part of the public public hearing. Normally we wouldn't do this, mm -hmm. but uh, the um, they they are permitted to poll watch, and this is by by law really. So any anybody that wants to come in, a candidate wants to come in and and watch personally. They may do so, obviously, in a socially distant manner. Uh, but yes, they are permitted to come in and, and, and watch. It sounds. Mm -hmm. and, who, and who are the counters? Are they, are they staff or admin staff? Who does the they counters? are actually it like all, an enormous effort. They are all appointed. Um, some of them are staff, and they, they are, um, most of them are not district residents. I think actually they're, none of them are district residents but they are appointed by the board. So if you go back, it's not this meeting agenda, but prior meeting, there may be actually two on this, on this agenda, but prior <laughs> meeting agenda, or even before the last meeting, they've all been board appointed. The okay. election chairperson so, is Tom DiGiacomo, a sitting board member, and the chief inspector is, is Chris Hender. He is our human resources administrator. Okay, and you have what, like 24 hours to do the count? So by on the, is it the 10th, we'll know the results? How does that work? I think the executive order is silent with respect to how long it takes. You must start counting right away. The end time was not really indicated and it really depends on how many ballots a, a district gets. I have to imagine that regardless, even with the highest ballot count, that a district would finish on June 10th. And as soon as we're done and everything has been double checked and the results will be posted. How many ballots did you send out? 24,000 plus. Oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So here's here's my here's the financial questions that I have. So I took a look back and you know, I've gone to a couple of board meetings over the years and talked about the rate of growth in this budget and then not being sustainable. So in the last ten years I looked, we've gone up about thirty five million dollars. So I guess the question I have for you is when I look at the budget for next year and I understand that there are so many uncertainties and, and uh variables that you don't have the answer to. I was just wondering, how do you plan? I mean, if you double, if you go another 35 million in the next decade, there won't be anybody left here who can afford it. So the question I had, and just a connection with that, like for the next year, why not make some cuts now and save those reserves when you know we're going to be hammered on the pensions? You know it. So it's, it's kind of, I look at the numbers and it's kind of like smoke and mirrors. And I've said this before because people think that you're staying under the tax cap. But if pensions are excluded from the tax cap next year, you know, we could see some really unbelievably high increases, not, not because of anything the school board did, but we've been paying into those reserves. So I just want to get your perspective on that. That's one of the reasons we're very thankful, uh, Susan, that last year the, um, the uh, law hit the books that allowed us to create a TRS. It's actually a retirement system reserve, sub-reserve or sub-fund. Uh, we're not cleaning those reserve accounts out. We're planning for the increases that are going to hit in future years. We'll also be able to, to, to utilize, if there is fund balance at the end of this year, to, 
to replenish some of what's being used. I can't promise all. So we're doing the best we can to take those future costs into account because you're absolutely right. Things like retirement systems, pe people misunderstand those very, very readily and, and almost routinely. Oh, yeah. um, these are not rates. We're not paying our retirees. These are, uh, it's a percentage of our current employee salaries. They pay into the system technically for their future retirement. So we're, you know, we all certificated employees pay into this X percent. And for the past couple of years, it's been down. It's been, you know, eight, nine, 10%. It's gone as high as 18. I, I imagine this is going to spike next year. So I, I do agree with you. And part of that will be hopefully um, addressed with the TRS sub fund that we have available. Same thing with some of the other expenses, including the ERS, the ERS fund, EBLO employee benefits and accrued liability. Um, even our, um, you know, unemployment may, may, may be in a situation where it, where it goes up down the road. Who knows? But we've got to be prepared to address some of these costs via reserve so it's not unsustainable, as you mentioned, and needs to be funded via tax levy. So it's right. You know, so my, my last question for yep. you is, is that I know that um, the executive order, however it was handled, that there are people on the payroll that are being paid when they're not working. So it is what it is, right? That's what he decided to do. It is what it is. So if we wind up with another shutdown in the fall, um, which I think there's been some chatter about, and you're with this $136 million budget, will the taxpayers, you know, be in a position where people are not working and they're being paid? And how do you handle that? Susan, I just, I just want to contrast not working and working remotely. And I can't tell you that everything is exactly the same as it would be when everybody's in and you're doing all the things that you would typically do, but there's, there's nobody that, that's, that's just not working, period. Uh, there are what we would call essentials that have to be on site, and we've brought a lot of people in and, and have done everything possible to keep, to, to keep them as far as apart from each other as we possibly can, but there is not a teacher in this district who is not working. Um, there is not a, a buildings and grounds or clerical or, or, or nurse in this district who's not working. I mean, they're, they're all working. It's just different kind of work because some of them aren't in every day. Uh, what happens in, this, in the fall, as I mentioned, will likely be dictated for us. I, I hope my concern, and I know we've been thinking ahead and planning and what we do here is going to be well thought, but I, I think if you leave districts to their own devices with some of the health related concerns, that's going to be a problem. So this does need to be mandated by IE as a state department or a local department of health. But a lot of that in terms of how uh, workers are ultimately situated is going to be determined by executive order. I understand that people working, yeah, let me just say, I understand that people working remotely and there are other districts that have said that, and I try, that is, you know, the situations that not everybody can work remotely. Not, it's just a fact, it's every business. Every, so, I mean, I, I, I take what you're saying and I understand it. So I guess the question is what you're saying is that everybody in the district who's on payroll is contributing at a level that you're comfortable with. Is that right? Under the circumstances, yes. Okay. And, and, and if honestly, that happens again, in the, this is this is yeah. something that, I'm not trying to say it in a mean way. I'm just trying to get no, no, I because there is a lot of discussion. I completely understand know? it. And I think your questions are, are questions on a lot of people's minds. I think in some respects, because of the way this this what we're doing now, what we have been doing for the past two months was rolled out essentially overnight. So we have you know, we, we did something that if you had said three months ago, we're going to do this in less than a week's time nobody would have believed it. You would have had people laughing, thinking it was, it was just uh, some, some form of cruel joke. No, I, I mean, I can tell you, I can speak for Huntington. What we did in, in a matter of days was absolutely incredible and it required everybody in this district being on board and, and on target. And to be honest with you, for some getting set and situated, and, and honestly, if there's a child missing, there is a staff member uh, missing from an online platform, there is a staff member two or four chasing that child down. So this is not just catch as catch can. This is probably off hours timing and, and work that would never have had to have been done in this manner, but had to be because of the situation. So in some cases, it's actually more challenging. Can't say for, you know, for every case and the time is, is a little different, but uh, it, it has not been an easy go. And, and I have to, again, throw out my commendations for everybody in this district for making it work here and in the best manner possible. And we're also learning from the experience. So if we do have to go back to a hybrid in September, we, we, we know what we want to do to make it even better. So it's, it's. Uh, well, I think that's really good for people to know in the circumstances where 
You're asking people to vote on this budget with so many other unknowns in their life right now and their life mm -hmm. circumstances and what the state's going to do and the county's going to do and the town, you know, that, I mean, a credit to all of you guys that you put the right people in place that are so dedicated and not, you know, looking for an easy out because it's apparently it's happening in other districts, but uh, I'm glad to hear that. Anyway, I thank you all for your time and uh, I wish you the best of luck. Thank, thank you. Susan. I appreciate it. Thanks, Susan. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay. I'm sorry, Jen, that's such a great point that you make because sometimes the teacher's day has been extended beyond the regular day. I've seen teachers reaching out to kids late at night, responding to homework late at night. So yeah. I'm sure teachers want to be back in school because their days have become much longer now. Yeah, I can speak personally to that. Absolutely. Sunday night, late at night, responding, you know, kids, it, part of our job has become to be their concierge in a sense, you know. <laughs> But I mean that in the most positive way to help them through this platform. And we're attending professional development remotely constantly. I was in another one today. So, yeah. And not, and not letting kids go. If there is a child. Absolutely that's not. That's what I mean. Day. We are right. No, right. They know how to, luckily, they know how to reach out to us. And yeah. And we want to respond and be there. So. And, and fortunately, in Huntington, they can. They have and also having the parents more um, uh, involved in the day-to-day -day probably creates more correspondence with parents than there was before too. You're mm -hmm. probably right about that also. Yes. I'm sure they're hearing from more parents on a daily basis than they were before. Okay, so- um, Just going down the list again. Yeah, I was just gonna say uh, to the public, you know, Mr. Plansky will be scanning the list again, see if anybody else has their hand raised with a question. There is a hand up. I don't know if it was the same one. Yeah, I think that's Susan. Can I lower your hand? <laughs> <laughs> you can raise it again. Oh, there it goes again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we'll move on. There is another public commentary section at the end of our meeting. So if something should occur to you as we proceed, just uh, you'll have another chance at it. Mm -hmm. All right. So. We have one item for discussion and action tonight, and that is that we need to amend our 2019-2020 school calendar. So I'm going to look for a motion to amend the 2019-2020 school calendar. Can I get a motion, please? Michelle. I have Michelle and I see a second from Christine before we go and vote on it. Is there anybody that had any questions or Jim, is there anything you wanted to explain about this amended calendar? Just that I held off. I didn't put this on the last agenda because I wanted to wait to make sure that the state wasn't going and they really haven't been dictating much recently, but they weren't going to come come down with something that uh, had us establishing earlier or later. And this is this is what the community is aware of and expects at this point And it uh, it aligns with that. Very good. Okay. Did we have any comments or questions from the trustees? Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Oh, that brings us right back to you, Jim, for the world's shortest personnel section. <laughs> Ever. I'm Ever. Seriously. <laughs> for approval of personnel items on, on Schedule 8. And there we have it. Okay, can I get a motion to approve our personnel items tonight, please? Okay. I hear, who was that? Was um, that X? Oh, it was Tom. Thank you. And a second from? Xavier. Xavier, thank you. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Very good. All right, so that just takes us to, did we skip Beth's part or there is Dr. Acker, I guess. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, what happened here? Okay. Okay, it is upon recommendation from the superintendent of schools that the Board of Education approve items I through M on this evening's business agenda. Okay, and we have all of those in front of us. Can I get a motion to approve our business items? Motion, Christine. Christine, thank you, and a second. Linda. Linda, motion and a second. Any comments, questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Very good. Okay, any announcements, Jim, at all? No, right? Nope, just a reminder that- um, No donations, right? Oh, nope. did, uh, did, you, did you hit the second public commentary? Not yet. 
No, I didn't. I was just trying to see if there were, there were no donations on this, right? No. 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 Okay, very good. All right. So now I'm moving down to the second public commentary. Gee, for the public, they really didn't have to wait very long. I, I hope they did a lot of really good hard thinking and that really <laughs> Okay, is there anybody out there that has any further questions or comments from the public? Just go to your participant list and raise a hand. Okay, we're good. Okay, thank you. Okay, so that moves to closing remarks by board members. Is there anybody here that, you know, any of the trustees that had anything else they wanted to say? I have something. Okay, um, sure. I just wanted, I did um, the uh, pickup with Emily today at Finley, and I, and I know it's happening across the district. Uh, thank you to the staff that was involved in this monumental task of <laughs> clearing out kids' lockers and instruments and the nurse's office and getting medications back. It was it worked seamlessly at Finley and it was really quite nice to see some of the staff. We uh, even, I mean, I probably enjoyed it more than Emily did. <laughs> I'm sure, right. I just want to thank the, the staff across the district for a great job. It was much appreciated. The staff that had to go into the lockers should actually uh. kind of get battle today, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, those lockers after, I can't even imagine. I don't even want to. <laughs> So that is nice, though, Michelle, to recognize that because that was a monumental task, I'm sure. I, I can tell you that the staff at the high school were having just a little bit too much fun this morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good. They deserve some fun. These have been a long, a lot of long days without a lot of fun. So when you can get. Speaking okay. of fun, actually, I went to a birthday parade with Joey on Saturday. And um, it was in a court, so you could go around and you pass everybody that was on the line on the way to go around. Yeah. And there were, I oh, her Wi Fi. Seven or eight, could have been nine. Finley, Finley, oh, it's my Wi Fi, sorry. Finley teachers there for the uh, child's birthday. It was, oh. Yeah. Uh, te teachers have been visiting left and right, I, and I didn't mention, but it's on it's on the district Facebook page. The music staff went went around honoring the 2020 that was graduating. So, music. That was awesome. great. It did. It was such this, a beautiful idea. Yeah. The hardest part of this is, you know, we're we're educators, and to go months without direct contact with a child is uh, um, is very difficult. Yeah. It really is. You feel the loss for sure. And you see them and you can't hug them. Yeah, that's brutal too. I've seen some of my nursery school kids and that kills me. So thank you to the staff for all the ways, all the teachers that have reached out to their kids and connected with them. There's just no way to thank them enough. So, okay, I guess that. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, yeah. And just a thank you to everyone who's been working on all the end of the year and moving up. Uh, and graduation, you know, that came out, um, all of those plans, and just yeah. a shout out to them, and thank you. Looks like it's going to be really good, despite the fact that it's different, it should be great. Yeah, every school has been working hard on that. So. They'll never forget it. Yeah. Just for sure. Jen, two quick uh, closing comments for me. Just a reminder to anybody who may go to the website and look at the line-by-line -line budget. Any questions, please call my office. I've spoken to a number of people and, and have been able to answer most questions. Um, also, I know there was a little glitch last night with Blackboard in terms of attachments going through some of the things that were sent from the, the middle and high school. That was a Blackboard systemic issue, and we did get a communication midday today that it has been resolved. So I, I know we resolved it on our end, but um, it's now resolved on their end. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right, and I guess that about wraps up our meeting. Thank you to those of you who joined us. Um, and we'll see everybody again next week. We need a motion. Motion to oh, enter. We need a motion to, <laughs> thank you. Exact. exact. But don't we have to go in? Oh, no, okay, we're not going to. Right. Okay, so Christine, we have a motion to go into exact. Can I have a second? Motion. Thank you, Tom. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Yeah, do we have to get off and get back on again, though, right? Yes. You have to sign into the other meeting, yep. so I'm going yes. to end this one. Okay, very good.